I'm Jahawi Batoli, eco-filmmaker and wildlife specialist. And I'm Ella Meek, co-founder of Kids Against Plastic and all-round animal lover. Welcome to our weekly update on the health of the planet and its animals. This is The Pulse. Coming up on today's episode. The latest from COP26, the United Nations Climate Change Conference. The campaign to free Billy, a traumatized elephant held in LA Zoo for over 30 years. And we are now at some of the more surprising eco news stories. Hey Ella, how are you doing? Hi Jahawi, I'm good, a, a wee bit chilly. <laughs> yeah, you're a little bit further north than usual. Yes, this week I'm reporting from Glasgow in Scotland because that's where the 2021 COP26 United Nations Climate Change Conference is being held. So that's where all of the world leaders come together to discuss the most effective ways to tackle the climate crisis. Yeah, it really is crunch time for these world leaders to come and agree on action. Yeah, absolutely. And the British Prime Minister has actually agreed to bring along a Sky TV documentary to show all of the other leaders. It's called In Your Hands and it shows the perspectives of six young people from all around the world and showing the effects of the climate crisis near them. Your future depends upon the future of the planet, but only, only if we all work hard now to make our planet healthy again, will your future be healthy too. Indonesia's capital city is gradually sinking. This is the sea wall that the authorities have put up. On this side of the wall is Jakarta, and on the other side of it, well, let's take a look. A mosque now submerged under the rising waters. A place where people used to pray, now abandoned because of the damage we've done to our environment. My beloved boreal forest is being destroyed by the world's largest industrial project. If we continue to take oil out of our Earth and put it into the atmosphere, then we're not gonna have an Earth anymore. My message to world leaders is for them to make sure every child has access to education so that they can learn about the importance of preserving not just human life, but the animals we share our planet with. And then we can beat climate change. Our planet needs saving. Are you listening? Are you listening? Wow, that was a really powerful message. So Ella, tell me, what are these leaders trying to achieve? Well, one of the first goals that are being discussed is net zero emissions by 2050, which basically means balancing the amount of greenhouse gases that are being produced and the amount of greenhouse gases that are being removed from the atmosphere through natural means or through the new technological advances. And this should help to limit temperature increase to 1.5 degrees. I was particularly interested in goal number two, which is about the protection and restoration of ecosystems. And I was moved by Sir David Attenborough's speech. Nature has been there for us when we needed it the most. Yet we have allowed our natural world and climate to reach breaking point. As the climate emergency intensifies, the threat to life on Earth becomes ever greater. But we have the choice of a better and wilder future. A future where wildlife thrives alongside people. A future where nature helps us in the fight against climate change. Nature has extraordinary powers to lock up carbon dioxide, to provide clean air and water, to help protect us from flooding and extreme weather, and to provide the food which sustains us. It's not too late to win the fight against the climate and nature crises. Given the chance, nature can recover in the most remarkable ways. Something that I'm super proud of at COP26 is a life-size Formula E car built by Envision Racing that's made from plastic collected by school children in Glasgow and plastic used by my family. Wow, that's amazing. I mean, is that the car that I saw world leaders having their pictures taken with? Yeah, the car has been on display at COP to raise awareness of the issue of single-use plastic. And it's a collaboration with my sister and my charity, Kids Against Plastic, and the Formula E team in Vision Racing. Single-use plastic is such a big issue. Here in Kenya, they banned 
single-use plastic bags from supermarkets a few years ago and actually right behind me is a marine park and now you actually can't go in there with any single-use plastics. Well, wow, that's very impressive and just the kind of initiative we need to be seeing a lot more. So Ella, what are the main messages coming out of COP26 so far? Well, over 100 nations, including Brazil, have committed to ending deforestation by 2030. This is super important because it's estimated that the equivalent of two to three football pitches are being lost every minute in the Amazon. Another way of putting that into perspective is that since the 1970s, they estimate that an area the size of Texas has been lost in the Amazon. I mean, that's bigger than Kenya. It's just shocking. Yeah, it really is. There's also been more positive news, and it's that world leaders have dedicated to reducing methane emissions by 30%, also by 2030. Yeah, that's really important because I know we all focus on CO2, but methane is one of the most potent greenhouse gases. And it's thought that pound for pound, it has 25 more times the warming potential than carbon dioxide. And it's also released in a lot of the things we do. It comes from industry, it comes from livestock, and it can even come from landfills. So bringing this down is hugely important. Yeah, exactly. And to discuss the importance of these developments, I caught up with Sophie Gagan from the Environmental Investigation Agency. Hi Sophie, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So what are your thoughts on the commitments from 100 nations to end deforestation by 2030? I think it's great to see the number and breadth of countries that have signed up. Um, but obviously, we need to see every single country who's signed up follow through with concrete action. We need to see measures put in place for good governance and for the protection of forests, but also the protection of the human rights and land rights of the indigenous people. Another thing we've seen come out of COP is world leaders committing to uh, reducing methane emissions by 30 percent, also by 2030. Do you think that this is achievable? Absolutely. But it's not just achievable, relatively easy to do. But again, like the deforestation pledge, this is just a pledge. And so we need to see this followed up with an international framework with legally binding methane emission reductions as well. When will we know if COP26 has been a success? I'm not sure. I think we will see what happens with the financing negotiations. And depending on that, that will have a huge indication of whether we can fund all of these lofty ambitions that we've talked about. And we look forward to hearing about the conclusions from the conference in the next episode. Take a look at this. Is that a leopard? Yes. In, in Western India, a leopard fell into a well. So Wildlife SOS, the Forest Service and the locals came together to rescue it. Now, in the clip, you can see that the locals had already lowered down a bench. So then Wildlife SOS came in with a trap and they slowly lowered it down and the leopard just jumped straight in. Oh, wow. Now, after two days of monitoring the leopard to make sure that it was healthy, this leopard was released back into the wild. Oh, that's amazing to hear. And it's great to see all of the locals helping out. But it just highlights this issue of urbanization and how it's causing more interactions with wild animals and humans. And it's not always for the best. The problem is so widespread that only last year, Wildlife SOS carried out 10,000 rescues. So that shows just how big of a problem this is. So there's something else that caught my eye this week, and it actually comes from your part of the world, Ella. Marwell Zoo, which is a zoo on the south coast of England, is potentially the first zoo of its kind to actually produce renewable energy from animal waste. What a great idea. It's just the kind of thing people here at COP26 would love. So how does it work? So what they do is they collect the animal waste and then they dry it to make briquettes. The briquettes are then fed into a boiler, which heats water, for their new tropical animal enclosure. So it's pretty incredible. Yeah, it's, it's great to see these innovative ideas and ways of getting renewable energy locally. Now for the latest in a long battle to free an elephant called Billy. Billy has been in Los Angeles Zoo in California since he was forcibly removed from his home in Malaysia in 1989. Wow, to be taken out of the wild and held in captivity for so long is tragic. 
but it's great to see that people are still campaigning for Billy and young people are included in that. 13-year-old Robin is among those who are campaigning for Billy to be moved to an animal sanctuary. We asked her to file a special report for The Pulse. Billy is an Asian bull elephant and this is how he spends his day. Almost always alone, rocking endlessly in his boredom, just as he's done for more than 30 years in captivity. The zoo claims it means he's happy, just looking forward to his food, but many animal experts disagree. We never see stereotypic behavior in the wild. None of that head bobbing that Billy does. You just don't see that in the wild, ever. Campaigners have been trying to free Billy since before I was born, and I'm so glad to see that they are not giving up. The elephants roam. I think it's important the zoo knows how many young people are against keeping Billy in a small space. So I spoke out myself at the rally. I would rather Billy be as happy as possible than for kids like me to get to stare at him. We're smart enough to learn about elephants in other ways. What bothers me most is that Billy was brought here from his home in Malaysia when he was just four years old. And this video shows that he was then cruelly trained to do tricks for visitors at the zoo. And you'll see him start to lay himself down. Come on down. When he gets that knee down, what I'll do is get this foot under him, which he's doing already, and that ensures that he comes this way and doesn't try to lie the other way. Steady. There is a sign just outside of Billy's enclosure saying, in zoos, males are often by themselves because that's how they would live in the wild. But again, elephant experts told us this just is not true most of the time. Male elephants are not on their own in the wild, um, except for, you know, short periods of time. The zoo refused our request for an interview, but I hope that they finally listen and let Billy go into a sanctuary where he can have so much more room and live much more like he would in his home in the wild. This is Robin in Los Angeles. I mean, that is a pretty shocking report. You know, coming from Africa, where we have our big megafauna that roams free, to see something like that is, is really hard. Well, for more on Billy's story and how you can help, check out Ecoflix's landmark documentary, Free Billy, on the Ecoflix platform now. So, Ella, we can't finish today's show without hearing about the amazing award you and your sister Amy just won. Oh, uh, we don't have to. <laughs> Yes, we do. It's called the Pride of Britain Award. It's quite an accolade, isn't it? Yeah, the Pride of Britain Awards recognise the achievements of everyday people. So my sister and I won the new category called Environmental Champions for our work with Kids Against Plastic. Amazing. Congratulations, Ella. That's so well deserved. And a little birdie told me that you may have the trophy there with you. Thank you. And yes, I do have it with me. But actually, I think we're about done for this week. So we'll see you next time. All right, then, we won't embarrass you anymore. <laughs> See you next week. Bye.